It's that time again, Big Brother, brothers and sisters. It is time to review week four of Big Brother. I am Deluxe Dave, and we're going to break down all the highs and the lows of this whole week of Big Brother. I was so excited to get back on here. I just got back from a trip going to actually Cabo. Yes, my job sent me to freaking Cabo. I was very excited about that. Unlike Brent, who may be sitting at home right now rethinking his time on the Big Brother house. But no, for real, hopefully you're back to like flying and everything, Brent. Yeah, you know, you know how it is. You just made some some real goof ups. But anyway, we're moving on to this new week of Big Brother. So let's start with talking about how excited Brittany was to be off of the block again. Like, you know, how many times can you go up on the freaking block at the very beginning of the game and she survived again? So I see why she was so ecstatic, but I do not see why Derek F is getting so tense we're talking about where he sits in the house. I think out of anybody in the house, Derek F is the furthest under the radar about who they're going to get rid of. I don't really think they look at Derek F as a threat right now, like maybe physically. I don't know whether that is true or not. We're going to see if he wins in this endurance competition that's coming up. Fingers crossed for him because I'm all for what Derek's, Derek F might do. But I do believe that Derek F is going to last very long in this game. Even though he is very concerned and very worried about that, I think he has a good chance of lasting because he's been kind of under the radar. People love him in the house. He brings an energy to the house that people just gravitate towards. So I'm here for what Derek F is bringing, but I don't see why he was so concerned talking to Xavier and really getting worried about where he sits in the house. Right now, it's the least of his concerns. So what he really needs to do just lay low and, you know, Xavier is going to look out for you. Your your cookout family is going to look out for you. I think that's the that's the crazy part about the cookout right now. They're all very in their heads about where they are in the game right now. And I, it's rightfully so. So we move on to Hannah being nervous because, you know, Christian and her relationship is kind of, it's a two-way street because, of course, his alliance first is to Alyssa, his showman's. And then Hannah comes second. But Hannah's really, really, really nervous that she might actually be going up on the block. So she has to do, you know, some different things because she's kind of floating out in the wind right now. And, you know, people are trying to make decisions for who they're going to put up next. So I can see why she's nervous. Now, I did notice a fact that Alyssa really, in this episode, I felt like she was trying to run the house. She was trying to take control of the whole situation, running down a, her exact moves. And I'm like, who is the head of the household right now? Is it Christian or is it Alyssa? Alyssa was talking and just making it seem like she was she was, she was sitting up in that bed real comfortable. And that's the only thing about showmance is when that person does get a chance to be head of household, that person that's in the showmance thinks they have just as much power as the HOH, which is not true. And many people have come to find whether, you know, you are in the HOH seat, or if you're just sitting on the outside as a showman, you need to realize that that HOH is in control. So even like, let's say y'all break up, what's going to happen? You're going to be gone because that's the HOH decision. So I think Alyssa was really trying to run a lot of things in this episode. And it really, it really, really tripped me out. So Alyssa really needs to calm down altogether. Christian is in control and Christian is really showing his cocky colors by, you know, some of the, you know, I understand you're winning and winning and you're doing great, but I'm starting to see a little bit of the, more of that cockiness come out. And if he really knew how this house was actually run right now, he wouldn't feel that cocky about where he's at right now. So that's all I got to say about that. I always have to mention the funniest parts of the episode. The very part that just had me, it just had me rolling. I sound like Derek F right now. The very part that, no. The funniest part to me was when Whitney was showing off her gym outfit that looked like a straight club outfit. The way I busted out laughing when she talked about I go to the gym in this outfit because she wants to look nice. I was like, who is working out in that sexy of an outfit when you go to the gym i said what what is she thinking and the way that they made the the consensus of everything around the house they were like going to each person and saying would you wear this no would you wear no which no and it cracked me up because she was really she was let me bring back my word befuddled she was really like like what is going on why don't people love the outfit that i'm in and that part just cracked me up but i do like the fact that Derek. 
got to sit down and talk about some stereotypes that go on within the Asian community. It was a very serious part of the episode, which I love how they bring that in every single week with something that really hits home. And I definitely could relate with him talking about that. That's why I see the similarity sometimes of even Asian culture and African-American culture being one in the same because he was bringing in the fact that, you know, his family doesn't think or have the same feelings or thoughts as he does. And it's very similar to the African-American community. There are so many different things that we look at in the black community and we're, we're like, well, you know, we are supposed to be listening and going along and, and trying to take the things from our elders that we can, but we do have minds of our own. So I really like that generational thing that he talked about within that. And I saw the similarities with that. So I really like that they pulled that in. Next, we came to the wild card competition though, which, you know, this was a big deal because with this wild card competition, there's going to be some kind of twist to the game. So we had the leftover people that really have not been in any of the competitions, which were Claire, Whitney, and Asa. So up here, you know, Asa's gameplay was horrible for this whole entire game. I was I was blown away at how bad Asa played. And maybe she's just playing along and trying to be weak, but maybe she really has a strength, but... It was very bad gameplay, I saw. I was just kind of like looking like, girl, I'm I'm rooting for you, but the way you're rolling that that bowling ball down there and it's just messing up, you know, and trying to hit I just it was it was not for me. So anyway, Claire ended up winning. Whitney really wanted to win, so you know, she could possibly, you know, be, you know, keep her just in case she goes up on the block. But in the end, Claire decided she had two choices. She had a decision if she wanted to save her team from one week of eviction, or if she wanted to keep herself until jury. So people start getting for, picked for the jury. There was a no brainer that she was going to pick that for herself, even though they hyped it up like, you know, she wasn't going to pick it. Claire, that was a smart decision. Stay around as long as you can. Your team can come and go, but you are guaranteeing yourself safety. At the end of the day, only one person can win that $750,000. And so I think her decision was wonderful. I think uh, for the next few weeks, she's safe. But when it comes down to it, they're going to bring that back up and they're going to use that as a reason to get you out of there. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. You know, they can turn that really, really quickly on you. So we'll see what happens with that. So finally, we move on in the episode where things started to like hit the fan with Hannah and her name was starting to come into more conversations. And she really is trying to stay off the block. The most interesting thing that I thought, even with all the conversations that they were having, was that a lot of people are kind of siding with Hannah, even though Sarah Beth was loudly yelling that she wanted to, you know, get Hannah out of there. I'm not sure if that was on this episode or the next episode, but Sarah Beth was very vocal about trying to make sure that Hannah gets out of out of there, even, I think, before the, the little rumblings because they haven't really had game talk. So I think that was the next episode where she started to talk about it. But basically, Hannah is smart. Before they even go up for, like, the nominees for who's going to be up there, she goes and pleads her case to Christian and made so much sense. Can I just shout out and say how smart Hannah is all together. I said, I'm listening to Hannah talk and I'm like, girl, you have this on um, like the smarts that you're pouring out to him and the way that you're using your words and everything like that. She can go very, very far in the game. So I think she is really a mental threat to the whole game. I don't know about physically yet, but as far as the mental game, Hannah is a very smart player and she's going to go down in Big Brother history because that was just the articulation, everything she did was was perfect. But at the end of the day, Christian still chose Whitney and Hannah. They went up on the block. So they were there at the end of that episode. You know, they're on the block. They have to figure out what they can do. Whitney's talking about she's going to come, you know, with a vengeance now and everything is going to, you know, get, you know, more intensified from here. And then, you know, it really didn't happen. But We'll continue on. So finally, we start to get to this amazing part of the show where we're getting ready to get into the power of veto and everything like that. And Derek X is already thinking ahead of like what he needs to do to make sure Hannah stays off the block. So they all pick for the veto competition and it comes down to Christian picks Claire, Hannah picks Derek, and Whitney picks Asa. And so they all get up there and, you know, they're all playing the veto and... Basically, it's it's a whole competition between Derek X and Christian when it comes down to it. Because, you know, Asa plays well 
But we also have people like, you know, Whitney, who's really trying to stay off the block. So it all comes down to basically Christian and Derek X. And they are the ones that really ran that game. And that was the bowling game. I think I mentioned before that there was another game that was played before for the wild card competition. But that was the particular game that had the bowling where they had to go under the net and they had to bowl the ball and had to get into a certain part. And they had to do it like a hundred times. It was like an insane amount of times they had to keep that ball rolling so that they could bowl it back to the other side. It was a crazy intense game. And I, I can't even imagine. I thought Austin was going to get her afro like stuck inside of the net or something like that because she had to keep bending and doing everything. So I wanted Austin to do well in that, but she didn't. And it ended up Christian won that. So he got to keep all of that power and we come to find out that later on, you know, finally, when it came down to the power of veto, they kept the nominations the same at the end of the day. But there was also a very important part that Tiffany uh, discussed with Hannah, Sarah Beth's outspokenness that I was talking about earlier about trying to get Hannah out of this game. So they have kind of made a pact at this point where they're talking to each other, trying to really figure out what they can do in this game to sustain themselves as a as a team, you know, keeping the cookout safe and all of that stuff. But we'll get into more of that because Tiffany, she's she's a beast also. Let me just say, Hannah and Tiffany, that duo together, magic right there, magic right there. I already see it. Hopefully it can stay intact. So in the end of it, Christian won. He, gave, he kept the veto the same. And Derek X makes a tragic decision, which kind of lets Hannah know that she's going out the door. He actually says, well, next week, it's just going to be me and Hannah on slop. And she's like, what if I'm still here? And I'm like, oh, she overheard him. And I was really like, oh, I hate when people mess up like that. You get too comfortable in the house and start yapping. He tried to fix it so much. And she let it be known that she was she was really, really mad. She lost her cool. She started going off. And you know, you do that. You're stuck in the house with people. But that really, really puts a target on your back. And you're like, you start to look like you're going to blow up other people's game. Once you blow up, that's one thing I've learned about the Big Brother houses. If you start to get angry and upset and let your emotions overtake you, you're most likely going to be the next one out of the house because people don't like that type of tension in the house. We learned that from Frenchie. We learned that a little bit. Brent wasn't really aggressive, but he was annoying. So once you start to make those mixtures, the only person I think that stayed out of the mix like that or the fray that really got on people's nerves was Josh. And he ended up winning Big Brother, like, I think that's Big Brother, like 19 or 18. Josh, he was one of my favorite. I'm sorry, with the pots and every like Josh, I, I loved him. I'm sorry, I wanted him to win. I mean, he he went through a lot, but I I really liked him. I love Josh. Anyway, the power of the uh, the power veto was not used, and we move on to Thursday night, which was very very big because we started out with Tiffany and Hannah talking and kind of making an alliance of what they want to do at the end, and Sarah Beth, who they're talking about tries to come in and spy and insert herself into the conversation. I'm like, Sarah Beth, go sit down somewhere. What are you doing? Like, leave these people alone. But she is, she's intense, but she's what, a forensic scientist or something like that. So she's used to the invest, I don't know, investigating or finding out different things or what's going on. I don't know. She's, she looks at the details of things. So she's very smart also. And that's why I think Sarah Beth is a threat to Hannah and Tiffany's alliance when it comes down to it. I just hope that they're able to keep it under wraps. That's the most important part. I love the, the way Tiffany talks very quietly. I love the way Hannah can talk quietly and they kind of get it. Even though Asa's, Asa's and Tiffany's relationship is starting to kind of deteriorate for me a little bit like that. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. But they do notice something about, you know, Sarah Beth, that she's very sneaky and her and Kylan's relationship is very close. And we come to a scene that has Kylan and Sarah Beth talking with one another. And Kylan really reveals that at the end of the day, he's going to be more he's going to be more amped to support the cookout than Sarah Beth, which I hope he can keep that under wraps also and that he really trusts the team, the cookout, the cookout. It is so important that y'all stick together. But it really, really, really irritated me because Tiffany is going around doing all this work in the house, trying to get everything together for the cookout, trying to get them on one accord, trying to let them know that if we stick together, cookout, we can get those people off and be the last one standing. Listen to what she's saying. Don't go around and get doubtful. And that's what I said. She irritated me in this episode again. And it's, like I said, it's been coming week by week. It's becoming so hard to root for us. And I was rooting for you, queen. We were all rooting for you. And she just keeps dropping the ball. I'm like, what are you 
doing, Asa? Like, she's doubting what Tiffany is saying. Like, she's like, I don't really trust Hannah. We haven't talked that much game. Girl, you're in the cookout. Y'all are together. As blacks, y'all have formed the cookout. And they, they I know they want to say it on, on CBS or whatever, but that's what the cookout is. It's a whole minority group that done got together, and they are trying to get done what they have to do to make this work. And with her doubting and not trusting and saying, me and Hannah haven't talked that much game, you got to worry about that further down the line. You're worried about that right now. We're not even at the end of the game. Get to that point and then worry about if, you know, me and Hannah are having conversations. You haven't even given a girl a chance. So, Asa, you're messing up your own game. Can I just shout at you right now? Even though you're not going to hear this, maybe till after Big Brother is all said and done, you're messing up your game all together right now by not trusting. And I know when you're in that house, it's probably so much different. And you're thinking so much differently, like you can't trust anybody in the house. But the cookout is down, and they're letting you know that. So... It's just frustrating to me. So every single week, I say it's blowing it. And you're going to be the first one from the cookout gone if you if you keep it up like that. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to come back to this later. But I say stop. Just stop. I keep telling people every week. I'm trying to see the one or the other. I'm telling y'all to stop because y'all doing too much. Thinking too far ahead. But I know your brain is, is, is fumbled right now. Anyway... Whitney makes her final plea to Alyssa about basically letting Christian know. She's trying to send out hints that Hannah is trying to manipulate what Christian is doing. And Alyssa makes a last ditch effort to go and talk to Christian about it. And Christian kind of looks like, you know, this might be an idea just to get Hannah out of here now while he can. But in the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they decided to evoke, evict. No, let me stop. I'm not going to tease Derek. They have been tearing De Derek F up on the internet about his evoting someone out to be evicted. And it's so bad. And even Julie had to correct him this time. Anyway, these tweets that y'all have been talking about Derek F and the freaking TikToks that I see. Mark has flown under the radar this week. His vote could be a toss up. Hello, Mark. Hi, Julie, you look radiant. Thank you, thank of you. Course. Please cast your vote I'm sadly to a vote, Whitney. Thank you. It's so embarrassing. And I really, I hope he gets together like the last week or something like that. He says, I choose to evoke. No, I just said it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just said evoke. Oh my God. It's in my head. That's how bad it is. I choose to evict. <laughs> oh my God. Whoever, like the last week of it. Oh my God. Derek F. I'm up here talking about you. See, God don't like ugly. I was up here talking about you and that's okay. Anyhow. So basically they voted to evict. Whitney. Whitney was gone. 10 to 0. She didn't even get a sympathy vote. Out the door you go, Whitney. I loved you. I loved you while you were here, but you had to go. And I'm I'm kind of glad it is where it is. And then Julie makes a huge announcement that's going to change this big brother house right now. Every single person is now not on teams. The aces, the jokers, the kings, the queen, they're all gone. It's all every man for themselves. And this is when Big Brother gets good. Now, I don't know if we're to the point of good, good, but we're at the point of almost good. Get rid of about two more people and we're getting real good stuff right now. But it's going to be really ruthless now. Like everybody is looking out for themselves. Claire has a right to do it. Uh, Asa has a right to do it. Brittany, everybody can really get in conjunction. People can stop worrying about who's going to be hurt from their other teams. Now you worry about yourself. This is when Big Brother is getting down to the business. And I am so here for it. We did not find out who the HOH is because we have to wait until yesterday's episode, Sunday, to see who is going to be the head of household. So I look forward to seeing that because I'm recording this before that Sunday episode. So I'm really looking forward to it. Make sure y'all are watching Big Brother every single week. Oh my God, it's getting so good. I'm enjoying it. Make sure you're watching it. CBS Sundays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Watch it. Make sure you subscribe. Come subscribe to this channel and bring other people to watch also because I want to hear what your opinion is of what's been going down on Big Brother this season for season 23. I will see you all here next week. Bye, Julie.